Mohit, pleasure to welcome you. Thank you. Uh, so far as today's conference is concerned, in the interview media lounge, you're the first one with a unicorn status. So again, congratulations first for that. Uh, Koi City has had a great reputation, a great name, and it doesn't happen by accident. There's a lot of hard work that goes into it. And I um, wanted to learn from you the fundamentals of data security and how Koi City has been different from other players in the market. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we started, um, again, my um, playbook is to find a pain point that none of the other existing players can address well right and that pain point was in the area of backups more broadly data management so traditional backups were not very scalable like data is growing every year phenomenally um, if you needed to back up all that you needed to set up several backup silos recovery from a backup was very slow uh, and a variety of other problems so the first thing we latched on to was that that let's make backups really simple and once we've delighted the customers once we've solved that pain once we give them a scale out product that can scale like in a google like way and has apple like manageability that's what we like to say um, then this platform can do more for you so the easiest way to understand that is to draw an analogy to a smartphone a smartphone starts off by being a great phone but beyond that, it's also your music player, your camera, your flashlight, and a whole lot of other stuff. Similarly, Cohesity starts off maybe as a backup, uh, but also gives you other aspects of data management, like you can store your files on it, you can do test and development on that, you can archive the data to the cloud, you can migrate the data to other places. So it becomes a full data management platform. On that, now once we have the data, uh, we can now give security on that. Why have siloed products? Right Before the smartphone came, we used to carry multiple devices. It was all siloed, fragmented. Similarly, on, once uh, the, the data comes on Cohesity, you can give other value-added services, and security is one of them. That's why we became a data security and a data management platform. So we can offer protection from ransomware attacks. Right, We can uh, scan the data once it's backed up and tell the customer, hey, you're, uh, this is infected with the ransomware. Uh, and and why keep the data, uh, you, you know, uh, and not put it to good use? Uh, why not extract insights from the data? So now we are. That's where the AI powered comes in. So we are bringing generative AI to this. Our customers can, uh, you know, input queries and uh, get insights from the data that, that's in there. Imagine we back up your emails and uh, you want to ask questions. Uh, hey, is there a compliance violation, right? And generative AI can figure out patterns in emails and say, hey, that, that looks like a compliance violation, right? So stuff like that. So so we bring uh, the whole suite of uh, data management, uh, data insights, and now AI-powered data insights, uh, sorry, data management, data security, and now AI-powered uh, data insights to our customers. So a couple of entrepreneurial-based questions, right? Uh, one is to finding out the real niche in the market and finding your core competency and then, you know, trying to evolve from there and building the products and then, of course, market testing, etc. In, in, in this journey, uh, for you especially, and this is a good lesson for other entrepreneurs to understand, if I were to ask you to pick two important lessons you learned based on different elements of the journey, uh, what would you like to share? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so number one would be, I often find that when people start a company, they're in a hurry to jump on the first idea that comes their way. Um, I, I, you know, you should put that idea in your back pocket. I really think the right way to understand and do companies is uh, whatever your area of expertise is, you probably don't want to venture too far out. But in the related areas, right, you should study everything that's out there. Uh, everything that maybe the VCs funded in the last three years. So that gives you uh, roughly a direction on where the what are the problems that people are finding. Uh, and remember that these companies are already in existence uh, or they will be soon going GA. So your the whole goal is to then find, okay, if these problems get solved, what are the next level of problems? What are the gaps that are not getting solved? And now you can marry your expertise to those gaps, maybe even take that idea that you have in your back pocket, see if, how it fits, and you can actually do a much bigger company, uh, potentially. So, so having the right idea, 
uh, and doing the right uh, uh, due diligence on the idea up front is very important because once you start a company then it's like years and years of hard work and if you pick pick the wrong idea or a small idea then you're basically putting a lot of hard work on the wrong idea so spending some time up front uh, on nailing the right thing to do a company on is very important that's number one number two is companies are all about people right you hire the right kind of people um, you will build a great company so um, I myself have made enough mistakes you know uh, many of the entrepreneurs who start companies are are typically engineers or technologists so they typically will just uh, interview people ask some puzzles on the whiteboard and think that that's the way to do uh, interviewing and that may, might be okay for individual uh, engineers but there's no way you can use that for leaders and uh, non uh, engineering people so I uh, really uh, you know we we subscribe to this form of uh, hiring called uh, competency based hiring where for every role that you want to hire, uh, you uh, think about and list all the traits you need, all the competencies you need, right? Oh, let's say you're hiring a sales guy. I want a sales guy who has an enterprise background. I have a sales guy who's been in industry for 10 years. I have a sales guy who's been beating his numbers for the last n number of quarters, right? So write down all those and then you test for each of those competencies, both in the interview as well as in reference checks. So you get a very data-driven, uh, you know, uh, scorecard of what the candidate looks like and your goal is to not be emotionally charged when you make these decisions but to be uh, informed with data and so the may the best candidate wins right whoever has the best score so to say is the prime candidate for for hiring so uh, i think combined picking the right idea and choosing um, uh, the right people to work on the idea i think are two of the key things that uh, people can do right uh, up from the very start to build a successful company so, in, it comes to fundraising, um, if you don't raise money, you are stuck. That is a big struggle for you. When you raise enough money, you have a challenge of meeting the investor's expectations. And then a lot of entrepreneurs have problems, you know, coming on the same page with the investors. So, how do you balance that and still come out stronger? So, here, uh, here is my playbook. Um, I like to come up with a big vision but then narrow it down to a minimum viable product if you may that it still addresses a key pain right addressing a pain is very important and you bring it down to a point where you can raise enough funding just for that right and that way you don't you're not raising whole blobs of money uh, for that big vision you're not raising too little money and you can't do much you're raising enough to just do that and once you show progress to the investors on that, they will give you more money to invest more in your vision. The mistake I see people make is that either their uh, vision is too small, so they may build a product in whatever few months or maybe year or so, but then there is nowhere else to go. So you may be great going out of the, uh, out of the gate, uh, but then competitors start copying you and if you don't have a bigger vision, you have nowhere to go. Your product will just become a commodity. So it's very important to have a big vision to iterate on, right? But it's also important to keep it tractable, to start with something that you can actually sell and show traction and you can just raise that much money on that. I, I sometimes uh, in, in the times of access, uh, people put too much money and they get, um, you know, tons of money to uh, pursue something and then they start wasting money. I've, uh, I know companies that basically on very few uh, millions of ARR, they've raised uh, at valuations of, uh, you know, upwards of one, two, three, four, even $10 billion. And that I think is very irresponsible in my mind, both on the part of the entrepreneur as well as on the part of VCs. Because if you overcapitalize a company, it's also bad, right? Uh, the fiscal uh, discipline goes away. They, they just feel they can just throw money here and there. So you should just raise enough. Uh, to uh, take the company to the next level and then you should raise more right even if you can doesn't mean that you should thank you uh, you're very articulate very methodical I appreciate you sharing those fabulous thoughts with us and it's been great lessons for entrepreneurs who will be listening to you thank you again for the opportunity thank you mm -hmm. thank you